Stephen Ames, welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? I'm very good. Thank you very much. I hope that you've been keeping safe during this pandemic along with your family. Yes, we, uh, we're doing like everybody else and hunking down and uh, trying to uh, make amends with our time here. Um, it's tough, obviously, like everybody else. I'm glad doing a lot of puzzles that. and watching, watching a lot of golf. So. I'm glad to hear that because the, the pandemic has put a pause on your golfing career and your golfing aspirations. Um, you know, what, what would your year look like had it not been for this pandemic? Oh, um, the season would have been right, right about now would be kicking in because the warm weather be coming into the stage right now. Um, from about April till November, we're pretty much playing every other, every week. Uh, with a couple of weeks off here and there, but uh, this stage right now, with like everybody else, we don't even know when we're going to be starting back. So at this stage right now, we've got to do the best that we can and uh, you know try and get rid of this coronavirus. What is, what has Stephen Ames been up to? That's the big question here in Trinidad and Tobago. You did compete <laughs> uh, pre-pandemic. You 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 were in competition. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, we were we were. Just just starting with, at the time when they call when we were when they called it, which is the week of the Masters, we were on our way to go play in Atlanta. And then they were like, "No, everything shut down." So at that stage, we weren't sure where we we're going to go. So we headed back to where we live now, uh, back in the Caribbean. And um, you know, we're making the most of it. As I say, I mean, the island of Ramon is a complete shutdown right now as well with curfews. So we're only picking up essentials, but um, considering the fact of what, where the U.S. is and where also where Canada is right now, I'm quite happy that we've uh, made the decision to come back here and uh, spend, our, spend our time and hunker down. You know, it's a, a reflective period, Stephen, for many people during quarantine, self-isolation. Being alone, it's a, it's a good time to reflect, if not reset and reassess where people's lives are at. Have you been doing a little bit of that? I have actually, yeah. Um, I think one of the, I think one of the biggest things that most of the athletes tend to, usually the good ones that tend to, uh, you know, reflect on things that uh, they needed to be to strengthen. Um, either it's the mind game or the physical game, and uh, the mind game for me right now has been very nice and calm and quiet. Um, but the physical part of it is things something that we we have got to continue. Um, we're not getting, any, I'm not getting any younger. And um, so we've, we, I've been doing almost two hours a day worth of working out. So that's been helping. And, uh, you know, eating properly, and doing a lot of clean cooking. And uh, that, that's helping. So that's, that's part of the program right now that I'm on. And uh, hopefully not for too much, much more. Yeah, you're into your mid-50s now. You know, when you reassess and reset where you're at, what are your golfing aspirations, not only for this particular year, but for the rest of your career, you would say? Well, um, I guess you always want to play well or play better. Um, I started off last year with uh, with another coach, and uh, we made some nice changes where my golf game has gotten to the stage where it's more, it's even more comfortable on a golf course than it's ever been. Uh, it's a shame that that's what's happened now with this pandemic going on. Um, so it's going to be like a bit of a kickstart to get uh, get things moving again, but. Uh, you know, I feel like my game has come to a stage now where I'm feeling a lot more comfortable on the golf course. And uh, I'm looking for, depending on when we start, we make the most of the year, what's left of it. And then we look for 2021 to be another full year of playing golf. Yeah, I've been doing some reflecting on your career as well in the build up to this interview. I mean, you know, just about 15, 16 years ago, you were absolutely on top of your game for the first time you won on the pga tour i believe it was the western open that you won uh that field it was a pretty decent yeah, field as well um you know you 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 had yeah. a really really good 2004 if i could just pick apart that field included vj singh tiger woods davis love the third was also in that field at the western open uh, and also you broke into the twenty the top yeah. 20 in the world rankings in the aftermath of 2004, you know, were you, uh, you should have been happy and would have been happy with 2004. After 2004, were you a little bit disappointed that you didn't kick on in a much bigger way? I mean, you did win the Players' Championship uh, a couple of years after. 
done or something. Yeah. Um, I don't know, actually. I never reflected on my back on that. So 2004 was a good start for me. And uh, that was actually the first year I started working with a psychologist. So that was the change for me there. And uh, from there, it was just a matter of being steady Eddie, playing very consistent years, maybe not playing as well as 2004. 2006 was a good year. You know, and as time goes on, which it does with everybody and athletes itself, life kind of gets in the way. Kids came into the scene, marriages came into the scene. So all those things kind of accumulated. And uh, yeah, there was a bit of a slowdown in that respect. Uh, but when I look back at my career and I look at uh, what I achieved, I've won four times. Uh, one of them was the Players' Championship, which is characterized as the fifth major. I'm not going to complain com compared to where we, where I came from, Trinidad, being a small little island with right now two golf courses, two 18-hole golf courses. Um, I'm very happy with my success that I've had so far. I want to talk about the 2006 uh, Players' Championship success, but just before that, just before we talk about that, I also just want to talk a month before that. You were at the uh, at the WGC Essentia match play uh you played against tiger woods and and you were hitting the headline stephen even before you played tiger woods there you, I, I, and i'm very much sure you recall that that conversation you had with the media in which you said uh, anything can happen especially where he's hitting the ball and you're talking about tiger woods there you went on to be beaten uh, nine and eight did you ever regret saying that no because i didn't say it somebody made it up the commentator who actually and who actually interviewed me Put those in her words, not mine. How did you feel about that? Because that was broadcasted. While that match was going on, while you were playing against Tiger Woods, that was broadcasted live on international TV. Yeah, I guess we can talk about negative press as much as we want, but those are things that happened in the past. And the, the positive of that whole year for me was the fact that I won the players by six shots in 2006. So obviously it didn't do a very big damage to my psyche because of the way I performed at the players. Did you ever have that conversation with Tiger Woods to tell him that you didn't say those words? He seemed hurt by it. Always. A few times. What was his response? He was like, no, that's typical media. That's how they always do it because they do it with him also. So, and we see it today going on with this pandemic going on, blaming Trump and blaming this person and blaming that person for well, we could have shut things down a lot sooner. It was just, just, as we all know, media tend to take things a little bit out of context. And that was just me, unfortunately, being myself, which you can rarely be around media, uh, that these things happen and they take advantage of you. Oh, cool. And they took advantage of myself there. Who was the reporter and the broadcaster, Stephen? Uh, she doesn't work for them anymore. Funny. Uh, do you, did you hold any uh, athletes tend to get very personal? I remember Michael Jordan getting very personal with Sports Illustrated. Did you hold anything personal against the broadcaster? No, absolutely nothing. I don't hold grudges against people. I move on. You did move on. You moved on in a huge way. Exactly. A month later, yeah. you went to the Players' Championships and you, you absolutely nailed it. Uh, you know, recovering from that defeat the Tiger Woods would have taken a great amount of character from you. Uh, talk us through the build-up to that month in, in winning the Players' Championship. Um, yeah, that was, uh, the build-up was normal for me because it was, uh, usually I start the year off in Florida. I played very few events on the West Coast because it's a little too cold, cold and wet. Not my favorite time of the year playing the Tour, hence the reason why I didn't play very much. And uh, so usually when I come to Florida, where the tour starts and when the players is in March, there's always a build up playing golf, playing more golf, playing in the, sun, in the sunshine. And uh, I was slowly building up and feeling my game coming back at that time. Because living in Canada, uh, I'm usually two months off and it takes me a while to get things kick started. I don't do like the other Canadians who go to Palm Springs or Florida to, to get their year started. I start my year off at my first event. So two months off and starting to play golf, it's a bit rusty. And uh, when I got to Florida, st things started coming together. And uh, I had a nice week with my old coach that I was working with. And uh, 
I had my brother in my bag at that time and we kind of nailed ahead on keeping things simple, watching my alignment and all that kind of stuff. And uh, we were, we just went out and we played golf and we played great golf. And uh, that, that week I had a, my psychologist out and we worked on a few things that kept my mind even quieter. And uh, that obviously was the, uh, the catalyst of the week for me by being very quiet mentally and um, came through. And like, like you saw, the results was I was winning my six. So that was a fun week there for me. It was a phenomenal week in your career. I mean, what was your reaction to it? Did you go into the Players' Championship against this huge field? I think like 48 of the 50 were top international golfers. Yeah. Did, you, did you think that you would have a, a chance of winning it, especially uh, having had the month that you had before? No, you know, it, it, you go to the Players' Championship, it's, it's our biggest event of the year, besides the majors. And uh, you, you always want to perform well and play well. The golf course is a, is a beast. Um, the TPC at Sawgrass. And I've had some success. I had success before 2002, where I finished uh, second to Craig Parks there. So I've had, I've had success. In a, and I started enjoying the golf course more and more as we played it the years prior. And, uh, you know, it was very much a golf course that suited me. Tee to green, it was perfect. Putting was always an issue. Um, it tends to be a bit streaky, and uh, that week everything was working was working great. So, like I said, we we had had a nice week where we worked out the the the, net, the, the clicks in the swing, and uh, we had a, a particular week where we were very calm mentally, and uh, we went out and just played golf, and we played great golf too. So it was fun. In 2005, you started what would be known as the Stephen Ames Cup. It pits the best of the junior golfers in Canada against those of TNT. What do you make of grassroots golf in Trinidad and Tobago? Oh, there's so much talent in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, I, I think they just lack the places to play and the, the facilities that are, that are there aren't the, the, the biggest and the best. Um, not, they, they have a lot of work in that respect to do. And, uh, I think given the fact that the kids have got all this talent that they had the facilities, it probably will shine a little bit more, but they haven't at this stage right now. But, and that was my reason for starting the Stephen Ames Cup was to give back to the kids, give them an opportunity of seeing um, different golf courses around Canada as well as uh, the kids for, for Canada to come to Trinidad to see what they had to play under and the conditions that they played under. And also the fact that uh, to, to give the Canadian kids a a little eye-opener with the different culture that there is in Trinidad, with the foods and steel pan and uh, down the islands, running around on the beaches and all that sort of stuff, which a lot of Canadian kids have never got the opportunity to see before. So it was a nice way to, to kind of get two cultures to work together. And, uh, you know, we did it for 10 years, and it was a lot of fun for 10 years. And uh, I had a blast doing it myself because it brought me back to my back to my teenage days when I was growing up in Trinidad and uh, reminiscing of all the times that we had on the down at Maracas Bay, playing at Mocha. And uh, so it was a lot of fun for myself also. You grew up in San Fernando. You played most of your youthful golf at Point of Pair. Uh, do you Point think, yeah. does golf, or, or at least the perception of golf from your experience, uh, still remain a rich man's sport in this country? Oh, big time. Of course it is, without a doubt. I think it's, it's, it's changing a lot more in Trinidad now. Um, uh, different cultures are starting to play the game, uh, which is nice to see. I mean, when I was growing up, uh, we had a few, a few more Caucasians playing the game. Now we have a lot more Indian, East Indians, and and uh, the Negroes playing the game, which is awesome because they're the ones that have the talent. They all play the cricket and the soccer and everything. And and when I look at the kids, when I go home to Trinidad to teach them there, those are all the kids that I see, and they're the ones that have the most talent. And the talent that uh, we all see at home in Trinidad with the cricketers and the soccer players. So, like I said, there is abundance of them down there, and it's, it's lovely to see, too. I enjoy it every time I go home, teaching those kids. You were inducted in, I, I believe it was 2014, into the Canadian Hall of Fame. You also received the Shaconia Gold Medal here in Trinidad and Tobago. Do you think this country did enough for your success in golf, Stephen? Um, 
I did did enough, yes. Because I also got Sportsman of the Year twice, I think. I've forgotten, it's been so long now. Um, In that respect, yeah, I think it's for what I've achieved uh, worldwide. They tend to look at the worldwide statue of the game or where it is or what you've achieved throughout the worldwide statue. And what I achieved throughout the worldwide statue for a Caribbean guy, that's a lot, yes. Um, When you compare it to the Tiger Woods or the Phil Mickelson's and those guys, no, it wasn't a lot. So in that respect, what I what uh, I was given with the Chicago Medal and the and Canadian Hall of Fame, I'm very very worthy of what I what I had achieved. Thank you. There's a saying in golf that you can play that sport until you're 90 years old. Do you plan on playing until you're 90? <laughs> well, I'm going to see if I can surpass my grandmother who played till she was 87. So I'm going to keep going. Yes. <laughs> she was a two-time champion as well. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, correct. She, she was, was a yes. two-time champion. <laughs> Stephen Ames, please stay safe. Thank you very much for this interview, and I hope that we keep in touch. And same to you guys, too. Stay at home and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you very much. Stephen Ames.